Good evening. And it's my pleasure to give you a very, very warm welcome to this concert this evening, the concert called My Favourite Hymn. The uh, Stanborough College of Music over the year provides us with a wide range of music uh, delights, but this evening's is very, very special, for it is a music of, a music of worship, of praise and of thanks to God for all that he has done for us. Um, there will be some, um, be many music, uh, instrumental and vocal uh, pieces of music presented to us. Uh, and also, but most of all, the congregational singing, which you will be part of. Uh, as we raise our voices in God, to, to God in prayer and praise. And thanks for all that he has done. Now, the musicians who are performing for us are performing not to show their skills, not to entertain, but as an act of worship. And for that reason, they prefer really, but it's, it's just not, they prefer if they're not applauded for what they're doing. We find some other way of expressing our thanks and appreciation. And for them, the most important thing is that your hearts are lifted with them in praise to God. Now, just one or two announcements before we continue. The first is, can you please check that your phones are switched off? And uh, by the way, it, we'd appreciate it very much if you didn't take videos or photographs, because it dis does distract people from the act of worship. The programme will now follow unannounced all the way through, but uh, after the service, after the concert, we invite you to join together with the young people and those older ones who are, before, who are playing for us in, for drinks in the Cedar Sycamore Room. Now we'll open our, our concert this evening with a word of prayer, so please bow your heads with me. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the delights that you have provided for us in our lives, significant of which is the gift of music. For the young people who have learned and worked hard to provide music, for the older ones with their skills and talents, we give you thanks. We pray that you will be with us this, this evening so that we will enjoy the music, that we will contribute to it by raising our own voices but most of all that we will feel your presence with us this evening, for we ask it in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen.
Our first reading this evening, a song of thanks, is found in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 8 to 12. And it reads, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. So reads the word of God.
You will see that the next item is for you to, hit, to sing How Great Thou Art. And why is this my favourite hymn? I grew up in a home that was quite musical. In fact, one of our favourite texts was from Isaiah 12, which, and my parents wrote that in the hymn book they bought for me. Sing to the Lord, for he has done wonderful things. And my dad had a wonderful tenor voice, and my mum used to play the piano or the organ, whichever was available. And when this hymn was first published back in the 50s, a long time ago, they bought the sheet music and they learnt it very quickly. And dad used to go around singing it in as many places as he could. And one of those places was to my parents' parents, who were Christians, but not of the same faith as us. And Grandad learned those words very quickly as well. And the two of them used to sing along. And this hymn means so much. The first two verses deal with the wonderful creation that God has made for us. And then it talks about... In spite of that, he sent his only son to die, to lift my burden of sin. And then it goes to look to the future, when Christ shall come and take me home. That is why it's my favorite hymn. It just says everything about our wonderful God and how I fit into the scheme of things. So let's sing it together. Thank you.
I'll be reading Psalm 19 from the English Standard Version. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs his course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumption's sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So reads the word of God.
Good evening. We were reading Psalms 136 from the English Standard Version. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. For his steadfast, <clears throat> for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights. For his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day. For his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and stars to rule over the night. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt. For his steadfast love endures forever. And brought Israel from among the nation, from among them. For his steadfast love endures forever. With a strong hand and an outstretched arm. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two. For his steadfast love endures forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of it. For his steadfast love endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who struck down great kings. For his steadfast love endures forever. And killed mighty kings. For his steadfast love endures forever. Sion, king of the Amorites. For his steadfast love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan. For his steadfast love endures forever. And gave their land as a heritage. For his steadfast love endures forever. A heritage to Israel, his servant. For his steadfast love endures forever. It is he who remembered us in our low estate. For his steadfast love endures forever. And rescued us from our foes. For his steadfast love endures forever. He who gives food to all flesh. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. For his steadfast love endures forever. Amen.
one of my favourite hymns is Come We That Love The Lord. It's actually based on a psalm, Psalm 137. Psalm 137 says, By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded us songs of joy. They said, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? Now this hymn was, was written from the point of view of the Israelites who have been taken captive into a foreign land. They are so mournful and depressed that they hang their harps in the poplars. They wonder, will we ever be able to sing again the songs of Zion? Their captors mocked them, made fun of them, urging them to sing the songs of Zion, but they could not. I wondered if that passage of scripture represents us sometimes. Have the trials and tribulations we are dealing with on a daily basis stolen our song? Have we hung up our harps in the trees because we think there's nothing left to sing about? I also wonder if this passage of scripture gives us some insight into finding our song again. Maybe if we return our focus to Zion or to the new Jerusalem, return our focus to heaven, if we did that, maybe our songs would be different. If only we focused on heaven, a place where there are no problems, no pain, I think we would change our tune. If we focused on the place where there is rejoicing forever, a place where there is singing, singing of praise to the one who saved us from our sins, I'm confident that things will be different. I think it's hard to think, think about the beauty and benefits of heaven without singing a song in our heart. So let us sing together, marching to Zion. Let's march together to Zion. Let's look upward. Forget our problems. Forget our difficulties. Forget our trials. Let's move upward. March ever, ever, ever heavenward. We are marching to Zion.
Shall we stand together as we close in prayer? Dearest Jesus, we thank you for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for the songs of praise that lifted us to Zion. We look forward to that great day, Lord, with no more sorrow or sighing. All these things would have passed away. Help us to keep praising you, Lord, as we continue to sojourn upon this earth. Bless us now abundantly, we pray, in Jesus' most worthy name. Amen. Amen.